52 crazy music facts everyone should know. Musician and peace advocate John Lennon often beat his girlfriends and wives, almost killed a man for calling him gay, was emotionally abusive towards his son, and mocked disabled people. Boston's debut album was initially rejected because band founder Tom Schultz had recorded and produced it entirely in his basement. In order to appease, fool the label, Schultz hired someone to pretend to produce the album while he re-recorded and reproduced the same album from his basement again. The UFO on the album cover is actually a guitar upside down. In late 60s, a group of imposters from Texas pretended to be the British rock band The Zombies and toured throughout the US to sold out shows. Two of those imposters, Dusty Hill and Frank Beard, would go on to form ZZ Top. Prince asked Journey's Jonathan Kane for his blessing when he had recorded Purple Rain because he was worried it sounded too much like Journey's faithfully. Pearl Jam's song Dirty Frank is about their tour bus driver who they called Dirty Frank because they were scared of him. The band had a running joke that Frank was a serial killer and was planning to eat their guitarist Mike McCready. In 1993, Killing Joke recorded vocals for three songs from their 1994 album Pandemonium inside the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid of Giza. A $3,000 bribe to the Minister of Antiquities secured them access for three days. Once inside, strange occurrences began, including batteries draining within minutes instead of lasting eight to ten hours. There is a conspiracy called the Paul is Dead Conspiracy, which claims that Paul McCartney died in 1966 and was replaced by a lookalike. Clues are said to be found in their album covers and songs. Fans believe that messages like Turn Me On Dead Man can be heard when playing Revolution 9 backwards. Soundgarden once did a one-minute rendition of John Lennon and Yoko Ono's duet Two Minutes Silence, claiming they'd cut Yoko's minute from the track. Maynard James Keenan of the band Tool has such a large problem with stalkers that he'll shoot at trespassers on his property with a paintball gun. Mike Patton, lead singer of the band Faith No More, was the voice for all the screams and howls of the infected in the Will Smith movie I Am Legend. Rage Against the Machine was told to censor the lyrics of Killing in the Name when performing live for BBC. They started out censored before launching into the full lyrics, which are, F you, I won't do what you tell me. Anthony Kiedis of Red Hot Chili Peppers banged Cher when he was 13 years old, and he lost his virginity to his dad's girlfriend when he was 12. Led Zeppelin, R.E.M. and Depeche Mode have never had a number one single, but Rihanna has had 10. As of 2016, One Republic frontman Ryan Tedder had written or co-written 39 Billboard Top 100 hits since 2005, with 18 Top 20s, 8 Top 10s, and 3 Number 1s. That's an average of 3.5 hits per year. Slayer released their album God Hates Us All on September 11, 2001. Kerry King's inspiration wasn't anti-Christian, but rather the idea that one day you're living your life, and then you're hit by a car or your dog dies, so you feel like God really hates me today. The intro to 1984 song People Are People by Depeche Mode was created by taking kitchen utensils, such as pots and pans, throwing them down the stairs, recording the sounds, and then looping the sounds. The Big Lebowski secured rights for the closing credit song Dead Flowers when rights owner and Rolling Stones manager Alan Klein, who was asking $150,000, heard the line, I hate the f Eagles man. Klein stood up and said, that's it, you can have the song. The Blue Oyster cult song Godzilla has never appeared in a Godzilla film. The song came out in 1977, so there have been at least 20 films it could have appeared in. The closest they've come is a cover of the song, sung by Serge Tankian, appearing in 2019's Godzilla, King of the Monsters. R.E.M.'s song, What's the Frequency, Kenneth, is about the mugging of Dan Rather. His attacker kept repeating, Kenneth, what's the frequency, as he kicked Rather. The case was solved when the attacker stormed NBC Studios 11 years later to find out the frequency used to beam signals to his brain. John Fogarty of the band Creedence Clearwater Revival tried to to sue the British band The Hollies for their 1972 song Long Cool Woman in a Black Dress because he thought it infringed on their trademark sound used in the CCR song Green River. No member of the band The Police has naturally blonde hair. They started dyeing their hair for a Wrigley's chewing gum commercial. None of them were actually police either. The scene in This Is Spinal Tap, where the band becomes lost backstage, was inspired by a video of Tom Petty walking through a series of doors trying to find the stage at a venue in Germany, but ending up on an indoor tennis court. Elvis once handed Alice Cooper one of his guns and asked him to point it at him to show off his karate skills. Cooper later said that he genuinely wanted to pull the trigger to do something legendary with his life, but Elvis knocked the gun out of his hand and pinned him before he could fire. 
Gray Slick of Jefferson Airplane was the first person to say f on American TV, something she doesn't regret. But according to her, one of her biggest regrets from her career in rock and roll was that she never got to f Jimi Hendrix. Brian Adams' hit song, Run To You, was originally written by Adams and Jim Valance for Blue Oyster Cult, but the group turned it down. Larry Graham of Sly and the Family Stone is widely credited with inventing percussive playing on the electric bass in the 1969 song, Thank You. He developed bass slapping in an earlier band in order to compensate for that band's lack of a drummer. The Kinks drummer, Mick Avery, once attacked his bandmate Dave Davies on stage during a gig by throwing a hi-hat stand at the guitarist. After fleeing the scene, he was finally caught by the police, but told them that it was just a new act in which the kinks would hurl their instruments at each other in an attempt to get out of it. The average length of a Ramones show at CBGB's in 1974 was 17 minutes. The club manager once got pissed that their set was so short that he yelled at them to keep playing. They had nothing else, so they just did their entire set again a second time. The song Black Magic Woman was originally released by Fleetwood Mac two years before Santana's more famous version. Peter Gabriel's only U.S. number one single, Sledgehammer, knocked his former band Genesis' only U.S. number one single, Invisible Touch, off the top of the charts in 1986. The band John Mayle and the Blues Breakers was a pioneering British band of the early 60s. While it never had any major hit of its own, band members included Eric Clapton and future members and founders of bands such as Fleetwood Wood Mac, The Rolling Stones, Cream, Frank Zappa, and the Mothers of Invention. Roy Orbison's I Drove All Night wasn't released until years after his death. It was finally released as part of a Super Mario World-themed compilation album called Nintendo White Knuckle Scorin'. The album was released to promote childhood literacy in memory of a talent agent who died in a helicopter crash with Stevie Ray Vaughan. Joni Mitchell's song Little Green is about the daughter she gave up for adoption in 1965. In 1967, Van Morrison still owed his record company 31 songs to finish his contract, so he quickly wrote and recorded 31 nonsense songs with titles such as Ring Worm, You Say France and I Whistle, Blow In Your Nose and Want a Danish? Jethro Tull's lead, Ian Anderson, composed the album Thick as a Brick, with only one song called Thick as a Brick, which was 42 minutes of duration, in retaliation to continuously having his prior album, Aqualung, called a concept album. A live album from the band Dream Theater was released on September 11, 2001, which had the skyline of New York City with the World Trade Center in flames on its album Art. Chevy Chase played drums in college for a band called The Leather Canary, which he referred to as a bad jazz band. After leaving, two band members and classmates went on to be successful as the band Steely Dan, to think he could have been famous.